And good morning, Deirdre and Tony. And this investigation continues to be active this morning. Stockton police saying that that three-year-old girl did not appear to be the intended target of this gunfire, nor was anyone else in the car she was riding in. Take a look. You can see evidence markers are still strewn along Commerce Street. This is between West Jackson and West Jefferson here in the south area of Stockton. Uh, Investigators have been focusing much of their search around these evidence markers, mainly because at this point in time, they're not quite sure who is responsible for this shooting. What they do know is 826 last night, right along Commerce Street, three-year-old girl riding in a car with family members. When gunfire rang out, the girl was struck. Family members rushed her to a local hospital. That is where she was pronounced dead. Since then, Stockton police have been trying to zero in on exactly where this shooting happened and who may be responsible. But again, back out here live, we are now about 11 hours since that shooting almost, and investigators still processing this scene, still looking for spots of evidence, and we watched them pick up shell casings here as well. So uh, appears there may be multiple multiple gunshots that were fired. Again, Stockton police saying that they do not believe that that three-year-old child nor anyone else in the car she was with were the intended targets of this gunfire. Essentially, this is a case of that three-year-old girl being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And now she's lost her life in Stockton. Mike Tissell, KCRA 3 News. Mike, thank you. New this morning, several people have been injured in a strip mall shooting in Houston. Police say a gunman opened fire early this morning, injuring at least six people. Now, the conditions of the victims are not known. Investigators say the suspect is dead after being shot by officers. To Commitment 2016 now, and the countdown is on. We're now just 10 hours away from the first presidential debate, and we're taking a live look inside the debate hall right now. Crews are busy getting the stage ready for tonight's highly anticipated debate. It's going to be the first time Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have shared the same stage, and it's all happening at Hofstra University in New York. We go now to Tracy Potts for the preview. This is the stage for their first face-off tonight. Hillary Clinton stage left, Donald Trump stayed right. She gets the first question. Clinton's team is concerned the bar has been set too low for Trump. Just because he doesn't fly off the handle in the middle of this debate does not mean that he is prepared to be president of the United States. He has every right to defend himself. She's got to be able to both make that positive case, but also not let um, D Donald Trump get away with what he's likely to do, which is uh, to make stuff up. It's 90 minutes of debate broken into six 15-minute sections. You get 90 minutes to, to look at people and really see whether there's depth, whether there's substance, and uh, whether there's uh, candor and truthfulness in what they say. Tonight's topics, America's direction, achieving prosperity, and securing America. That could get into immigration, jobs, the economy, foreign policy, leadership, even Clinton's emails and the Trump Foundation. Clinton's invited Trump critic Mark Cuban Cuban to sit in the front row. She was trying to distract attention, her campaign trying to play games with front row seats, and Donald Trump's not about that. Trump tweeted about inviting Jennifer Flowers, who had an affair with Bill Clinton, but his campaign insists she's not on their list. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Hempstead, New York. Well, the big question going into the debate is what each candidate must do to be declared the winner. NBC's Chuck Todd weighs in on the expectations for each side. There's really one central question about tonight's debate, and it is Donald Trump's temperament. The Hillary Clinton campaign has been trying to portray him as unfit for office. It's the central question of this campaign that they want voters to be thinking about. And the Trump people know it. And I think the whole question is, which Trump shows up? Can he go for 90 minutes without looking like primary Trump or the guy you, you hear about on Twitter? The Clinton campaign wants to bait him. We'll see if they can do it. The Trump campaign is hoping he can keep his cool. We'll see which one succeeds. And there's a lot to see tonight. Tonight's presidential debate airs live over on KCRA 3 at 6. Immediately after, the KCRA 3 news team breaks down the debate in a full hour special that will start at 8. The Voice airs at 9, followed by Dateline NBC at 10. And then stay tuned for a full wrap-up of the debate on KCRA 3 News at 11. I can't believe how many people are here talking about how much they're looking forward to watching this debate. Bigger than the Super Bowl. 
that's what they're anticipating. That would be something. <laughs> that would be something. We'll see. It is 7-12 now, heading to court. The suspect from the Washington Mall shooting will face a judge. The question investigators have yet to answer. And the greatest gift to golf. Arnold Palmer passes away at the age of 87. The many contributions fans are remembering. And Highway 50 continues to be very slow, a backup near Harbor. We'll have a look at where this accident is and how you can get around it. Coming up. And a live look downtown Sacramento as the sun is rising. It's a comfortable start to your day, but may not be so comfortable this afternoon. Just how hot we will get coming up. All right, welcome back. Quarter past seven on this Monday morning, and we're getting a live look from our Fairfield Sky Camera. Pretty nice out there right now, but that's never a good sign this early in the morning <laughs> because it's going to be doing this in the afternoon. Heating on up today, 99 for your high in Sacramento and Marysville, Modesto as well, 97 in Fairfield, 80 in Lake Tahoe. All right, take a look at this. This is an area that you're going to want to avoid if you can take an alternate route. If you use 80 eastbound, uh, it's a delay of over an hour. That's due to a fatal accident early this morning and westbound is slow as well. Uh, 19 minutes, it'll take you northbound 99 and uh, typical right now in the yellow westbound 80 from business 80 to I-5. But again, try to avoid eastbound 80 or get out as quickly as you can. Now to the protests in Charlotte, North Carolina this morning. The city has lifted a curfew following six days of demonstrations in response to the officer-involved shooting death of a man. Uh, protests remain peaceful overnight, even after police released dash cam video showing the shooting of Keith Scott. In both clips, you can't tell if Scott is holding a gun. Police say he had a weapon. Scott's family maintains he was unarmed and didn't pose a threat to officers. Well, several days of protests last Last week became violent with one man being shot and killed by another civilian Wednesday night. However, police say there were no major problems over the weekend. Happening today, the suspect accused in a deadly shooting at a northern Washington State Mall Friday night is going to appear in court. The 20-year-old Arkan Seton was arrested late Saturday about 30 miles west of the crime scene in a town called Burlington. Seton is accused of opening fire inside the Cascade Mall, killing five people. Police believe that Seton is the lone suspect in that shooting. Investigators are still trying to find a motive. Turning to our wildfire coverage now, evacuation orders are in effect for a fast-moving wildfire in Sonoma County. The sawmill fire broke out yesterday morning about 10 miles east of Cloverdale. That fire has burned 1,500 acres, and it's only 10% contained this morning. Dozens of people are still under evacuation orders this morning. And the sports world is mourning the death of legendary golfer Arnold Palmer. Palmer passed away in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania over the weekend from complications of heart problems. The king, as he was called, was wildly popular with golf fans, so much so that they had their own nickname, Arnie's Army, which would follow him every step around a golf course. Palmer won seven major championships during his career. He was 87 years old. Well, presidents and presidential candidates are honoring Arnold Palmer this morning on Twitter. Yeah, President Obama posted this picture calling him the king who was as extraordinary on the links as he was generous to others. And President George H.W. Bush also tweeted Palmer brought gold to millions by his daring and caring uh, personality. And Trump uh, said that Donald Trump rather said that Palmer was a true champion who will truly be missed. A lot of people may be going to uh, honor him enjoying a cold Arnold Palmer. That would drink be one named way to do after it. him. You're going to need a few today because it's going to be a hot one, Tamara. That's true. And maybe you're going to be out on the golf course sipping one of those drinks. The best time to get out and play or do anything outside is going to be in the morning time frame. Right now, comfortable 58 degrees in the capital city. Sitting at 60 degrees in Stockton with a live view over the port city right now. Sky's looking a little hazy as the sun is just peeking out for the morning start. 60 currently in Modesto to 34 out the door this this morning in Lake Tahoe. High pressure is the main driver in our forecast. So what does that mean? Well, it's driving all the clouds to our north and keeping us pretty much cloud free across northern California. The other thing it does for us is it brings us more of a northerly wind as the wind circulates around this area of high pressure. That keeps us warm, that keeps us dry. And as mentioned, again, very cloud free out there. May notice the sky is becoming a little hazy this afternoon as that ozone starts to develop. Air 
quality is poor in some spots and unhealthy for sensitive groups in Modesto and in Sacramento County today around Stockton. Air quality is at moderate levels for that air quality index. Future cast, let me show you when we're going to get a break from the heat today. A hot day. Tomorrow is going to be a hot day as well as this ridge still really commanding the forecast lead. Once it starts to move off to the east, though, it'll take its warmth with it. Wednesday is going to be our transition day. While it'll still be pretty warm outside, it won't be as hot as how we're starting the work week. And then on Wednesday night and into Thursday, this weather system comes digging in from the north. It has some cooler air attached with it and even a little bit of moisture, which could bring some showers by Thursday and Friday into the northern mountains. While the valley stays dry, it's going to bring the cool air with it and more of the onshore breeze, and that will trim temperatures back tremendously by the end of this work week. Forecast today, 83 in Truckee, 92 out the door this afternoon in Quincy. Highs in the lower 90s from Placerville and in through Camino to 95 in Jackson and around Valley Springs. Our forecast toasty near the coast. In fact, heat advisory remain in effect for areas right along the coast side, including San Francisco, topping out at 90 this afternoon. San Jose could get close to triple digits and we could reach triple digits in Concord. 98 today in Stockton and around Discovery Bay. 99 in Modesto. Wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure a lot of folks are going to be cruising on the Delta if you have the luxury of doing so on this Monday. Upper 90s ahead in Marysville, warming up to 97 in Folsom. Seven day forecast again comes with some changes this week. Hot day today at 99, still warm tomorrow at 97, dropping off to a high of 90 Wednesday, upper 80s Thursday and bring on the breeze Friday temperatures in the 70s by the weekend. It is 721. Let's see what's happening on the roadways and it's been one delay after another. It sure has and it continues to be very slow for drivers headed along interstate 80, but we're really starting to see a backup build along Interstate 80 out of Roseville into Sacramento across the top. And then once you hit I-5, it is just a solid line of brake lights all the way past Reed as you're connecting into West Sacramento and on across the causeway. That fatal accident, that's in the eastbound direction, so it's not in the westbound direction, but we are seeing the big chunk of delays heading westbound as that is the commute direction. Eastbound drivers, they're dealing with delays out of Davis and right now that travel time over an hour commute from 113 to West Capitol. Here is what your ride looks like in the westbound direction. This is Highway 50 near Harbor. As you're approaching the scene of that crash, uh, traffic continues to back up. It's uh, closer to uh, beyond Jefferson at this point. Excuse me. If you are heading into downtown uh, Sacramento, it's starting to get a little slow out of Natomas as well as northbound heading out towards the airport. A lot of folks using this as their alternate route to get around this crash. Uh, I-5 heading northbound into Woodland and then connecting with 113 down towards Davis and connecting with I-80. So keep that in mind. A lot of folks are using that again as their alternate route as you want to use that. It will get you around that crash and you won't be in such a big delays, but you will be starting to see more brake lights on your morning ride. Here's a quick check of your travel time. Still over an hour commute eastbound 80 drivers from Highway 113 to West Capitol. Back over to you guys. All right, thank you. It is now 722. It's in demand, but isn't any good. Consumer Reports takes on the iPhone 7. What test have found out so far and on the lookout the pest putting San Joaquin County citrus trees in danger. Well, the iPhone has been on the store shelves for 10 days. The latest one, the phones were delivered to Consumer Reports testing and the investigators have already kind of done their thing. Lisa Gonzalez has some of the results. Consumer Reports began testing the new iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus on Friday. The phones tout a number of upgrades, including an enhanced camera, and for the first time, Apple says the iPhone 7 is water resistant, up to one meter of water for 30 minutes. So Consumer Reports put those claims to the test in a pressurized tank. Our water immersion tests indicate that the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus passed but we will continue to check them for functionality. What's missing from the new iPhone is getting a lot of attention. With no headphone jack, audio testers examined the new headphone connection using the lightning charging port. As far as sound quality goes, we found no significant differences with the new wired headphone connections. Apple is claiming the iPhone 7 Plus is a photographer's dream with more megapixels on the selfie camera and the addition of a second lens allowing for optical zoom on the main camera. In our preliminary testing, we found that the telephoto lens was sharper and had better overall image performance than the primary lens, but that primary lens was pretty comparable to previous iPhones. Consumer Reports testers are still evaluating the new phone's voice quality and battery life. Lisa Gonzalez, KCRA 3 News. And we'll be back with more right after this.
Good morning. Time now is 727. Let's get a check on your forecast. We've got another warm one ahead of us, Tamara. Oh, it's going to be hot out there, Deirdre. So take time to really enjoy the morning start where it's very comfortable. Conditions right now in the 50s across the valley and the skies are crystal clear. Looking at the satellite view here, there's no marine there even to be found at the coast. So you know that sets the stage for the warming ahead today. Right now, 58 degrees in Sacramento, Marysville and Fairfield. 60 degrees currently in Stockton, 70 in Auburn and 28 eight around Truckee Valley Planner today will take you through the timing of the uh, forecast and that does include temperatures in the 80s around mid morning afternoon sunshine and feeling the heat with temperatures sliding into the 90s and eventually a high today of 99 degrees. Seven day forecast shows improving weather temperatures dropping off to the 80s by the end of the work week. Let's get a check now on the roadways. Good morning and expect delays if you're heading through West Sacramento this morning. Live look this is Highway 50 near Harbor. This is the westbound direction. We have been tracking a fatal accident that has uh, some lanes blocked in the eastbound direction, but it's causing a big backup in both directions of I-80 and Highway 50. A lot of folks using 113 to I-5 into Woodland and down into uh, Sacramento, but that is starting to get slow as well. Quick check of your travel times out of Davis into West Sacramento, about a 95 minute commute, so over an hour. Northbound 99, 20 minute ride and business 80 seeing those brake lights, 15 minutes. Back for you. Well, a man and a woman on a motorcycle were killed in an early morning crash that happened in Fair Oaks. Officers say that a man driving the wrong way on Madison Avenue near Lincoln Oaks hit the motorcycle. The pair were pronounced dead at the scene. Their names at this point not made public. CHP says the driver who caused the crash was arrested on charges of driving under the influence. Right now, switch to KQCA My 58 on the lookout. The pest that's putting San Joaquin County citrus trees in danger. KCRA 3 News at 7 on My58 continues. Welcome back 730 on this Monday morning. A live look this morning at uh, the Golden One Center. A beautiful start to the day to get ready for that heat to return. Love how the sun reflects off at this time. Gorgeous. 730 now. Here's a look at what we're following for you right now. One person was killed. Two people were hurt in a crash that threw two people off the Yolo Causeway in Yolo County. It happened along eastbound 80 near West Capitol Avenue, and it happened after a truck carrying tomatoes hit a stalled sedan on the freeway. A man and woman on a motorcycle were killed by a man suspected of driving under the influence. It happened along Madison Avenue in Fair Oaks. The CHP says the suspected DUI driver was driving the wrong way when he hit the motorcycle. The man is now in custody. And the first presidential debate takes place tonight. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are squaring off at Hofstra University in New York. We'll have much more on what to expect coming up in just a couple of minutes. 731 now. As you're heading out the door, you can leave all those jackets and sweaters behind. That's right. Uh, hopefully you still have the summer wardrobe ready to go because you could put it to use, especially as we go throughout the day today. It is comfortable as we kick off your Monday, getting the kids ready for school, getting yourself ready to head to the office or just running some errands this uh, mid morning. Temperatures in the upper 50s right now in Marysville in through the capital city in Fairfield. 60 degrees currently in Stockton and 70 degrees right now in Auburn. 34 currently in South Lake Tahoe. Getting kids ready for school this morning. They may want a light layer as they head out to the bus stop or maybe you pack them in the car and you're taking them to school this morning. Temperatures likely in the 50s to lower 60s. The ride home, it'll be hot and toasty with temperatures in the upper 90s. So our forecast today is going to prove that uh, temperatures will stay in the upper 90s and then as we head towards Tuesday should be in the upper 90s as well. And then we'll finally notice as we get into the day on Wednesday that temperatures will be warming into the lower 90s. So again, cool start but a hot finish to the day and I'll show you what's ahead for the rest of the week coming up 732. Let's see what's happening on the roadways. If you're traveling, if your plans have you traveling through West Sacramento this morning, you may want to reconsider your route. Here's a live look. This is Highway 50 near Harbor. This is the westbound direction. Those uh, brake lights there. We've been tracking an accident that had shut down uh, all but one lane eastbound 80 near the causeway there. So traffic though in the westbound direction saw the biggest impact at first, but we're starting to see that uh, 
uh, that impact build along the eastbound direction out of Davis for folks trying to make their way across the causeway and into West Sacramento. About an hour and a half commute right now for that ride. A lot of folks using 113 to I-5 heading near the airport and then down into downtown Sacramento. Although that's getting slow, we're starting to see yellow sensors lighting up our screen and speeds are dropping around 20 miles an hour. So give yourself plenty of extra time no matter which way you go. It's going to be a slow ride. That is Check Your Traffic. Back over to you. All right, thank you in Northern California community, keeping hope alive for a 15 year old girl abducted four months ago. They marched and walked for her yesterday. Family and friends of Pearl Pinson gathered at the Interstate 780 overpass in Vallejo yesterday, marching to a local church, chanting her name and holding out hope that she will be found alive. Four months ago, Pearl Pinson was abducted in Vallejo on her way to school. Investigators say she was kidnapped by a 19 year old Vallejo resident, Fernando Castro. He's on the left. He was chased from the Bay Area to Southern California. Deputies caught up with him in Santa Barbara County where he was killed in a shootout with officers. There is still no information about what happened to Pinson. Now turning back to commitment 2016, a new poll shows Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump in a virtual tie ahead of tonight's debate. Now, according to the latest ABC Washington Post poll, 46% of likely voters support Clinton, while 44% support Trump. Libertarian Gary Johnson is getting 5% support, while Green Party candidate Jill Stein is at 1%. Now, tonight's face-off will be the first time Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton share the same stage. KCR3 Sally Kidd is in Hempstead. New York, where the showdown is taking place. Good morning from Hofstra University. This is where it all happens tonight. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump in their very first debate. Only two podiums on the stage this time around. The candidates will be facing off for 90 minutes. The Trump campaign has been downplaying expectations, pointing out that Hillary Clinton is the more experienced, more polished debater. Clinton has been deep in debate prep in the days leading up to this first matchup. Analysts say Clinton needs to appear trustworthy and find ways to connect with the audience, while Trump needs to show that he is fit for the job. Now, as we head into tonight's debate, the latest ABC News Washington Post poll shows the race is virtually tied. In Hempstead, New York, I'm Sally Kidd. So the big question going into tonight is how Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are going to be judged on their performance. Political experts say that both have challenges to overcome to have a successful night. I think she has to display the vast knowledge that she has, you know, the deep policy knowledge, but without sounding overly wonky. He's got to find ways, I think, to, to assure them again that he's not as temperamentally unfit for the job and he's not as racist. Thank you very much. Tonight's debate will air live over on KCR3 at 6 immediately after the KCR3 news team will be breaking down the debate in a full hour special. It starts at 8. The Voice is on at 9, followed by Dateline NBC at 10. Then stay tuned for a full wrap up of the debate on the KCR3 news at 11. 736 now new this morning. An insect that carries a dangerous disease has turned up in San Joaquin County. The disease could cause citrus trees to die off, which could devastate growers and the industry. As KCR3's Melinda Meza reports, treatment is underway to combat the Asian citrus psyllid. A dangerous pest has been found in Manteca. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is on the lookout for the Asian citrus psyllid. These insects could carry disease that kill trees. The concern isn't really the insect itself, but the disease Wong Wong Bing. San Joaquin County Ag Commissioner says the insects have been spotted so in San Joaquin states. County before, but the fact that three were located in one area is causing the Ag Commissioners to be concerned. Somewhat disturbing. We're used to finding single finds, but uh, when you find multiples, it makes you wonder whether or not there's something more going on there. In May, the insect was spotted at a nursery in Tracy. Citrus trees were quarantined. Treatment was performed in and around the area. Now more traps are being placed and treatment taking place in the area of Union Road and Lathrop Road in Manteca. And since the Asian citrus psyllid has been detected here in San Joaquin County, the Ag Commissioner says half this county has been quarantined, meaning you cannot remove citrus trees out of the county. For instance, if we have a small nursery that likes to go to flea markets or, or say, farmer's markets, 
and they want to go to the Bay Area, they would be prohibited from doing that because they can't move that stock from the quarantine into the non-quarantine area. Citrus crops are a $10.7 billion industry in California. The Ag Commissioner says he does not want what happened in Florida to happen here. Florida farmers lost millions of dollars because of this insect carrying disease. When you start losing trees, you start losing jobs, and you find that uh, you have a lot of devastation to, to the actual industry. In Manteca, Melinda Meza, KCRA 3 News. Well, more treatment will be taking place in San Joaquin County over the next three weeks. Sacramento Mayor Kevin Johnson now speaking out about last week's pie attack. The mayor was at Sac High when 32 year old Sean Thompson hit him in the face with a pie. Pictures show you the aftermath of the incident. The mayor defended himself by then hitting Thompson multiple times in the face. When asked how he felt about how he had handled the situation, the mayor said he had seconds to react. When somebody slugs you with something from behind, uh, I didn't know it was a pie. I thought it was a fist. And you just react because you're in an environment. My wife was to my right. My mom was a little bit further to my right. There's tons of students there. You don't know if the person has a, a, a weapon, a knife, or a gun. You don't know anything. So your instincts are just to protect and to subdue them as quickly as possible. The mayor didn't say if he's going to be pressing charges against Thompson. Thompson is charged with felony assault. He is out of jail on bond. A judge ordered him to stay away from Johnson, however, for three years. A fitting send off for a legendary sports broadcaster. Vin Scully called his last Dodgers home game last night as the team clinched the NL West title. Scully received a standing ovation from players and fans after the team's win. The voice of the Dodgers is retiring after spending 67 years with the organization. That is the longest time any broadcaster has been with a single team in professional sports history. Scully had this message for his fans last night. You know the song, The Wind Beneath My Wings. And that's what you are. You're the wings beneath the team's wings. You're the team beneath my wings. They passed out tissue last night, so Vince Scully will call his last game on October 2nd when the Dodgers finish their regular season in San Francisco. He says he will not call games in the postseason. The national average price of gasoline in the U.S. has risen four cents over the past two weeks. It is now 2.25 a gallon for regular. Industry analysts say retailers and refiners have raised their prices in response to a rise in the cost of crude oil, but the average price per gallon is a dime less than it was a year ago. As usual, gas here in Northern California it's higher than the national average in Sacramento. It is 2.67 a gallon. It's 2.64 in Stockton, and in Modesto, gas is 2.60 a gallon. The social media app Snapchat is introducing its first hardware product, video recording glasses. Take a look at these. The glasses called Spectacles can record video 10 seconds at a time with the tap of a button. And then the video is uploaded to the memory section of the app via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. They'll be available in the U.S. later this fall on a limited basis for $130. Snapchat is also changing its company name to Snapchat Inc. The app name will not change. It's only a week, only week three rather, but the Raiders and 49ers season already heading in different directions. San Francisco was blown out yesterday when they took on the Seattle Seahawks on the road. They lost 37 to 18. The Niners record is now one and two. Meanwhile, the Raiders narrowly won their game yesterday. At the very end, the Tennessee Titans were 12 yards from the end zone on fourth down when quarterback threw an incomplete pass to lose the game. The Raiders went on to win 17 to 10. They are now two and one on the season. It is now 742 back streets back where they will be setting up a residency in Vegas and when you can get tickets to the show and bringing Legos to life. The movie earning two teenagers international recognition. Welcome back 745 on this Monday. Take a look at this live look at uh, Lake Tahoe just 
clear blue skies today. Uh, Tamara going to be even warm in uh, Tahoe today? In the 80s. In the 80s. Nice day to be in Tahoe. Well, two Vermont teens are riding high after making a Lego movie of their own. They won an international competition for bringing Legos to life. How cool is that? The reward, a trip to where it all began, the original Legoland in Denmark. Abby Isaacs from KCRA 3's Upstate New York sister station got a look at how the duo put the video together. Vermont teen Jack Knopp is already on to his next stop motion project. It can be relaxing and it can also be